I just want to stop and think for one sec as we cruise past 900,000 COVID deaths, officially registered COVID deaths. There was this fascinating comparison that I saw very briefly on Twitter by NYC Southpaw. And all it is, is two front pages of the New York Times. The first is this, it says, US deaths near 100,000, an incalculable loss. And you see there, I believe just names of people who have passed. So 100,000, it is so striking, so gut wrenching that we should acknowledge the names, and we should cover the front page with them. And then this, bring up this front page. By the way, a little bit different, it's down below the map. 900,000 dead, but many Americans move on. It's so I get that it was incalculable before, <laughs> but whatever it was incalculable toward, it is nine times more incalculable than it was. But we're moving on. <laughs> Doesn't that suck, Adrian? Oh Doesn't my god, that it suck. It really just says like, oh, oop, like we are we are desensitized to the number of deaths, uh, the people that we're losing as a result of this virus. Like this is sad. We mm -hmm. are just desensitized. Yeah, and look, I have no doubt that when we inevitably pass a million, <laughs> they'll do another big front page. But the text of the 900,000 is the same exact size as the portion that says power games on first day of Olympics. Good. Yeah, I think it's Wordle got more attention. The, what's that? Wordle, New York Times buying Wordle probably got more attention, more play. That's true. Yeah, I, oh God. It, it's smaller than the announcement about the jobs, and I get it. That's that's good news. I we have that, but it's nine hundred thousand. Yeah. But by the way, I do want to point out one thing that people have added to this conversation. I don't like that we just accept, but people move on. I get. It. I I'm a cynic, and and I get that. Like, I'm very annoyed by the the complaining about any any sort of protective measures, but like they haven't really. We're supposed to believe, no, if you still care about this, Adrian, if you still worried about getting sick or if you think we should have controls, you're like a little bit weird because most people have moved on. But have most people moved on? Because when you ask them about things like this, like in this Navigator research study, no, people still support mask mandates. They still, they still almost 60% support vaccine mandates. These are not in the American context in comparison to other policies. These are not particularly controversial measures. Two thirds still support mask mandates. Some people have moved on, yes, but let's also not like weirdly magnify them and make them the norm against which we're weirdos who are desperately trying to stay alive for some reason. Yeah, I but know, I kind of think this is this is like capitalism at play. You know, the fact that people don't want to amplify that there are still deaths, that there is still reason to be afraid and to be mindful and diligent. Like they want to pretend everything is going to be fine so that they can continue to generate revenue for these big companies and whatnot. You know, we're about to have a Super Bowl at the end of the week. And you know, the last thing people want to say is that, hey, maybe you shouldn't go hang out in a big arena with a bunch of other people who may or may not be vaccinated and may or may not be, you know, hacking and all sorts of sickness. No, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And look, I maybe that maybe that's not what New York Times means. I mean, I, I personally think that New York Times is and has been as as you say, like this is this is not about people moving on, although some have. This is about corporations wanting to get back to normal. They want yeah. you at your desk. That's what they want. And you get to make a decision. I, th I think you should be able to make a decision about that. Maybe you want to, maybe you want to go back. Maybe you feel safe going back, but they want you to go back and it ain't about your safety. Um, but anyway, yeah, I just, I, I, let's, let's like if you, if you lost someone in the first three months of the pandemic, that is a tragedy. If you lost someone to COVID yesterday, that is still a tragedy, a needless tragedy. We've not moved on from that, or at least I haven't, we haven't. It still is terrible. It is still causing untold suffering. And you can see here that we, we seem like we're moving out of this next chart. We seem like we're moving out of the Omicron wave. Um, but remember, like you see where it says seven day average. You see that? That was like the, the dark winter. We thought that peak was really high then. And then look at Omicron. Do you, do you think it's impossible that I will show you a chart in eight months where the Omicron wave is the small one? I hope so.
fingers crossed. But let's not move on too prematurely. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Cast or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.